Hello, John Talley here with Partzilla.com. Today I'm going to show you how to replace the air filter on our 2007 Honda Goldwing GL1800A. Listen, I'd like to tell you this is a simple project, but it's not. A lot of nuts and bolts have to come out. A lot of different things have to be removed. Well, listen, I'm going to go print out a bunch of diagrams so I can keep up with it myself. So if you're ready, I'll go do that, grab some tools, and we'll dive straight in. So let's go. All right, guys, this is going to be a skill level two, but don't be afraid of it. The biggest thing to be concerned with is just keeping things organized and laid out in the same order that they came out so we can get them put back on there in the same order. All right, as far as the tools that we're gonna need, it's a pretty short list. A pair of needle nose pliers, Phillips screwdriver, a couple of different extensions, a 10 millimeter, just regular socket, then a five and a six millimeter Allen, a couple of different ratchets, and if you can, get this uh, rivet removal tool. Makes life a lot easier. All right, as far as the parts go, there's only one part number for it. It's right here. But listen, as you're pulling your machine apart and then you find that there's a couple of screws or a bolt missing, reference our parts diagram, since that's gonna tell you exactly what should be on the machine and then the correct part number to get it ordered. So once you've got your parts and your tools together, we can go over there and I can show you how to do it. So let's go. So, step number one, let's get the seat out of the way. That's just gonna be a six millimeter Allen. There's gonna be four bolts back where the, these little hand grips are. Once we get those four out, then the entire seat will just lift up and then back and out. Now just pull this section up, and back it out. Got one electrical connection right here. I think that's gonna be for the seat heater. Go and get it unplugged. And now she should lift out. All right, next, let's go ahead and get these side covers off, grab them toward the back, and then they just disconnect from these three little sections right here. Put them somewhere safe. All right, next, let's go ahead and start working on the instrument cluster cover. Not gonna need these for a while. All right, go ahead and release these two tabs by pulling toward you. Reach down here at the bottom, pull up, then, at the very top and now she's off now just lean it back as far as you can and we have to disconnect the wires for the tweeters the tweeters have a little uh, rubber grommet that you have to kind of peel back then you can squeeze in the top of the connection and pull right out that's what I was talking about so you pull this little grommet back and then push in right here on the top and then it'll release I just got to do the same thing on the other side. Now we need to get the, uh, the controls for the seat here disconnected. All right. It actually goes to a connection right in front of the ignition switch. Push in on the top of that connector and pull to the right. There we go. Are we having fun yet? <laughs> All right, guys, what we're going to do next is get these uh, wind deflectors out of the way. And obviously, this is uh, an add on that somebody did later. It certainly didn't come from the factory like this. This particular setup just has little covers, and under that, just fill head screws. So, we're going to go ahead and get all that removed. And then we can remove these little cover strips. You want to pop it at the bottom and just work your way up easy. And when you get all the way to the front, then you pull it back and it comes out. You can see that was held in by that little edge right there. Let's do the same thing for the other side. Start at the bottom, start working your way up. Pull down and out. Now let's go ahead and get to our pockets. With these type of rivets, you actually just push them in and that will release them to where I can remove them. I'm just using a pick tool to do this. All right, you'll notice in this particular pocket, there's a uh, eighth inch jack, but it has a grommet at the back. We should be able to push it back through. As well as that audio, there is a 12 volt, looks like a cigarette type plug jack that's been added. So may have to do a little bit of finagling to get her out. Let's just unplug it from here. Get this grommet pushed back through. Remember, try to keep everything grouped together as you're pulling it apart. 
And this one is a combination of Phillips and two rivets. The rivets are over here on the outside. And then on the inside, there's a couple of Phillips. Now, we need to disconnect from that key lock. And it's just a cable that comes up right here. What we're going to do is pop it out of that holder, rotate it over to that groove, and then lift it out. All right, now let's start unbolting and unscrewing the shelf. Let's start with these two at the uh, ignition switch. Then we'll start working our way around the perimeter. Like I said, these change. They're not all the same. So when you're pulling these off, go lay them down in kind of a pattern. You may be doing like I'm doing. I'm actually trusting you know, several other people that have gone before me on this particular unit to make sure the right screws went back in to where they came out. Now, if you would reference this drawing, it's going to show you by length and millimeter what should go where. So take a few minutes, look at that drawing, make sure as you're pulling them out that they actually match up with it. Yeah, that looks like it. All right, next, let's head down here and get these two 10 millimeters off the very back of the fairing. Move that holder out of the way. Try not to lose that. All right, next, let's go ahead and reach up and disconnect the cables that go to the vent. Disconnect our headlight adjust, as well as the preload. There's this main harness right here. The next one is actually mounted to the side or the top of where the radiator mounts. It's a big plug, looks like it's maybe a tin conductor, gray. I'm gonna push in on it and pull at the same time. There's a release at the bottom of the plug where it mounts to the radiator backing plate. Then you can lift it out, push in here, and then she releases. All right, with all that done, here comes the fun part. That should have us disconnected for the most part, everything except here. So, what we're going to do is go and pull the rear fairing off these two studs at the back. Tilt it up. Start guiding it off. Now we just need to disconnect the audio controls. So, there's two plugs. They're going straight into the back of it. Both releases are toward the outside. So, I'm going to do the right one first. Push in and pull down. In the left one. All right, that's what I was talking about. Ah, there's one more plug over on this side, just this little three conductor. Now let's see if that clears it. Up, and antenna wire. Now we're clear. All right, before I set this down, these this is where those two main plugs were. So, we've got all our bolts laid out like they came out, and we're going to carefully set this down all by itself so it doesn't get scratched. All right, guys, now that we have the shelf out of the way, we just have to dig a little bit deeper to get to this air filter. Start off by removing these two forward air ducts. Just take out this one screw at the bottom, and then it'll just pull straight out. Same thing for the other side. Now, let's go ahead and get the ECU out of the way. Now this next section we want to lift off it has the cruise control and various other uh, modules in it. There's four 10 millimeter bolts. So we'll go ahead and disconnect the modules. So what we're going to do is unbolt it and just lift it over and let it hang to the side. So we want to leave the uh, cruise control still attached to it. All right, I could probably leave these little uh, air channels in place, but I think it's going to be easier if I just move them out of the way. So there's only one plastic rivet left on either side. We'll pull that out, get those out of the way. Then it should be easier to get this section to flip up. Let go my ego. Yeah, it's going to make it much easier. Let's see if it'll let me flip it up. Believe it or not, now we're actually down to the air box. So let's get this. I think it's the barrow sensor. 
disconnected and then we've got seven screws. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There she is. It doesn't look terrible, but it doesn't look that great either. It was time to uh, get this one swapped out. And of course, this is a uh, non-reusable filter. I mean, you have to replace it. You can't clean it because if you sprayed it with any type of cleaner, it would just mat up and turn it into paper mache, and that's the last thing you want. So, let's carefully lift it out without dumping any of its contents into the intake, which would also be a bad thing. So we want to lift it up as straight as possible. Yeah, that, that wasn't looking too spiffy. It was uh, definitely time to go ahead and replace this one. All right, guys, got our new filter. All we need to do now is just put it all back together. So you ready? Let's go. All right, and just hit our seven screws to tighten it back down. Just make sure that she is set into her groove. I usually start with the top right and then go to the bottom left to make sure it's actually sitting flush as it should be. There it goes. Now we can go ahead and tighten down the rest of them. Get our sensors plugged back in. Now we're going to swing back over the uh, assembly with the cruise control as well as all the bracketry for the, the ECU and controllers. Let's get it bolted in place. All right, with that bolted back down, let's go ahead and plug up the ABS control unit. It's got three connectors that go in, back into it. And what you want to listen for is that click when it actually uh, bottoms out. It's for the ignition switch. Sensor on this side. And route this up, up under here. And this holds that in place. These get tucked in right here. Let's go ahead and get these lower bearing pieces back in. This little piece goes around the uh, ignition switch. Those rivets I pulled out down below look pretty rough, so we're going to go ahead and put brand new ones in. Let's go ahead and get our ECU back in place. This harness, make sure it's routed around the front of it. There's that click that you're listening for. Now we just have our audio control section, which just roughly sits in place until the shelf comes back in antenna connection. So we've got everything connected back to the ECU and the ABS. So now we need to get those two intake ducts put back in. I think we've got it. So let's bring the shelf over carefully. All right, we've got both of the audio connectors made. Just don't forget your antenna all the way here at the back. Now we just need to guide it down into place. Make sure you hit all your connectors, like for the headlight adjust, because they're really tough to get to once it bottoms out. Other thing I need to pull up is the line for the vent control. Go ahead and slide her up. Make sure you've got this control cable, which is gonna lock that particular compartment. The control wires are right here. And then that connector actually goes to a bracket that holds it right on the side of the radiator. So once you make the connection, carry it over here and push it down on that little pin that's going to hold it. Just a little plastic tab. Get everything layered together. You have to be real gentle as you're trying to work it down. And when you're working this section, this tab needs to go all the way down to the bottom. It's a whole lot of plastic to layer up, but when it sits flush, you'll know it. Because there it is. Okay, so we've got her back in place. Let's start bolting it back down. I still have all my bolts laid out as they came off, so I get them back in the right place. What I typically do is put them all together, just hand tight, and then we'll go back and snug them down. As you're tightening them down, if they don't really seem to bottom out, you may need to shift the plastics around just to get that edge or that collar to uh, go all the way in. All right, next, let's go ahead and uh, get our vent control hooked back up. All right, let's back in this 
groove. I just need to snap that in place. All right. Life is good. Next, go ahead and get this little rubber grommet. Same thing on the other side. You can get these two bolts here that hold in the center section for the ignition switch. Get our dash put back in. There's a connection down here, and then we actually need to re-plug in the tweeters up top. It's got a couple of little protrusions, little tabs that hold it in place. Now, she'll just snap back in place. Start at the top, then work your way back. Now, we can start working on getting our storage compartments in on both sides. And if you remember, this one actually had a little bit of aftermarket stuff on it, so we'll need to take that into account. Also, go ahead and bring your microphone hook up and get it in position, because you don't want to leave it down there. There's our connector for the power. Then we have an audio connection we need to bring up. Get our grommet back in. Get her set back in place. All right, and it's just held in by a couple of push rivets. And to reset these, you just push them back up, hold like that, and then just push them flush. And that locks them back in place. Now let's get the other side. Before we can just pop it in there, we need to reconnect this little cable so you can lock this side. Now this one's a little bit different than the other side. It actually has the push pins on this side and then a couple of Phillips screws on the inside. All right, let's get on these two strips that actually cover up all the, the hardware. Same thing for the other side. All right, on this particular unit, they had wind deflectors, they were aftermarket, so we need to go ahead and get those back on. Most important thing to do here is when you bring it in, bring it with this side facing down, and we just need to get these two clips up under that uh, leading edge, as well as this main one down there on that bar above the fuel pump. Stop there because we actually have a connection that has to be made. Now let's go ahead and guide her down. Get our grab rails mounted back down. Now let's get on our side panels. Just tuck it up under the edge of the seat. Just line it up with those rubber grommets. So just push in place. And just to make sure we did everything right. Well, everything's looking good. So I know that was one heck of a project, but you will save yourself a lot of money if you follow the steps and just do it on your own. Most uh, dealerships are gonna charge an hour and a half, maybe two hours. So if you need any of the parts for your machine, why don't you come see us at partzilla.com and we can get you taken care of. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Till next time, we just wanna say thanks for shopping with us here at Partzilla and we will see you in the next video. Have a great day.